What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million, and this is our first essential mods for the DFL V4. Guys, the weather's getting colder, and we call it the mod season because the riding kind of dies down for most of you guys and the mod season starts, but over here at Motor Million, we're in Miami, the weather's getting better to ride, but we also have a lot of stuff to do. And we have our new DFL V4, we have to, to do our first essential mods to it. And you guys can probably predict on what it's gonna be. It's gonna be our radiator guards is the first thing that we're gonna do. So let's get to it and let's start off. And this is our radiator and old cooler guards by Evotech. And don't be confused guys, this is Evotech UK, it's Evotech Performance. And there's also Evotech in Italy, which we also have parts for. They're totally different companies. But this is the one that we're gonna run. It's CNC aluminum and powder coated in black. Let's start taking apart the bike. I don't think it's a lot of work to change it, but let's take the fairings apart as the instructions say, and let's install these on there. So we have this front lower fairing piece off. As you guys see, it does come with a lower radiator guard, but obviously we want to have everything matching. So we're going to remove this and replace it with the Evotech ones. It has these washer things over here that we got to remove. And also it gives us the access that we need for the top radiator guard rather than just the oil cooler guard as well. There is the rubber grommets that you got to put in place. And if you look closely at the radiator guard, they look like hexagons, but there are some round spots that these rubber grommets go into. It's also in the instructional manual of the product. They don't come with printed manuals, but if you go on our website onto the product link, in the description of the product, there's a link that you could click to pull up the instruction manuals if you ever want to double check something. The radiator guard is on guys. I think it's safe to say it's the easiest radiator guard I've ever installed on any bike. There's a lot of access and it looks great, but we don't have it just for looks, we have it for protection as well. Now let's do the oil cooler guard. And that's it, the lower fairings back on guys. It is the easiest radiator and oil cooler guard I've installed. Nothing has been ever this easy. Not, none of the old Gen 2 or Gen 1 S1000RRs, nothing of the Panigale V4s or the V2s. This was super easy. And some of you might ask, why are we installing radiator guards? But the main reason why they're on there is to make sure that these tires don't kick up all the rock and sand and everything and just pellet it towards your radiator. This does happen, guys. We do hear Time to time, it's not every day, but once in a while you get a phone call from somebody saying that they rode the bike from home to the dealer and got, they got a puncture in their radiator. You don't want to do that. Aside from a puncture, guys, the fins that are on your radiator, they're straight when you first get them and they'll start getting bent with the rocks and everything. And those fins are what is causing the cooling in your radiator. The, the air goes through the fins, cools the radiator, well, cools the coolant that's in the radiator and that's how it works. If those fins are bent, you're, you're not getting optimal airflow through it. So you wanna make sure that you have the maximum efficiency on your radiator and that's why they're helpful. And I know some of you guys are gonna say, oh, you're putting something in front of the radiator that's causing the efficiency to drop. Yes, it probably is causing the efficiency to drop, but don't forget this radiator is brand new. If you let it get beat up by rocks, probably within 3000 miles, I bet you the efficiency is lower than having an open radiator versus a radiator guard that was protected from day one. And that's pretty much why we install these things on there. And this is super easy. I don't think there is any excuse for not having one on there. But next on our list is our caliper spacers. And let's get to those things. Now we're gonna be changing our fuel cap, guys. We have our beautiful TWM fuel cap. This is the CNC aluminum one. We do have a carbon one for it as well. But on these bikes, the changing of the fuel cap is a little different than just unbolting the stock one and bolting on the aftermarket one. There's a few more steps involved in that and I'm gonna show you the steps. First thing is you're gonna pop your fuel cap open. You're gonna have four bolts that are underneath. We're gonna take this off. We're gonna dissect the pieces 
of the fuel cap apart because there's a flange and a fuel cap that's put together. You're gonna to transfer it onto the TWM one and we're gonna replace the cap from here like that. So this is the fuel cap assembly. I wanna remove the bolts away from it. And the flange is this piece that you see over here. We're gonna to have to get our Phillips screwdriver, take this off and then transfer this flange assembly over to the TWM one. So there you go now that the Phillips screws are out. This should just come apart, just like that. This is the assembly that we're not gonna use. This is what we're using. So this is our TWM fuel cap, and this is the hardware that comes with it. Let me show you something really quick, guys. When you're putting it together, because you're gonna to have to put this together, there is a little lip on here, if you can see it. So this is supposed to be at 12 o'clock, so when you go to place this back on your motorcycle, make sure that this is looking forward on the bike. We're gonna grab these oval nuts and we're gonna insert them on the back of this flange and they should just stay in there. And just make sure that when you put them in that they're not dropping. A little trick is if they start coming off, you could apply a little bit of thick grease so that they stay in place. If not, you could try to super glue them in place. I don't recommend that, the grease should be the best way to go with it. And we're gonna insert it into all the five holes in here and then we're gonna put this piece back onto the motorcycle. So before I remove all of them actually, I'm gonna try to put some of these bolts in. The four bolts that we used to remove the original fuel cap, we're gonna use those to put the flange back in to hold it down. Once you tighten your four bolts, your oval nuts will be in place so they won't move around. And this is really important guys, you wanna make sure those oval nuts are sitting flat and straight. If not, you're gonna strip the oval nuts. But the next step is to grab our fuel cap. Do not forget this gasket over here. If you forget this gasket, and if it falls and you don't put it into place right here, you're gonna have some leaking. So make sure that is in place. This is almost 100% of the times that we get a call that there is a leaking fuel cap, they forget that gasket in place. And if you have everything oriented correctly, your TWM logo here is gonna be at six o'clock and don't be alarmed, this Italian flag sticker, if you don't want it on your motorcycle, it's a sticker and it comes off. Try not to push down too much because you don't want those oval nuts to drop to a level that it's not gonna thread in straight. There you go, now that you got a few threads started on each one of those. Grab your two and a half millimeter Allen and just try to tighten them down in a star pattern. Just make sure it's all tight and there you go. The beauty of this fuel cap is you push down, quarter turn, and this cap pops off. You can fill it up and then put it back on. Just hear the click and it's on there. And that's as easy as it gets. Now your key stays in your pocket for your keyless go. And whenever you're at the pump, you could just press down, open it, fill up, go make some noise and continue on. Now that we're done with this, we're gonna to go to the back of the bike. Let's get that fender eliminator on the bike. It's our side mount license plate holder. So the license plate will go here. And then we're gonna to have to install our new turn signals and the turn signals go into here. There's also an option if you want, you could run your license plate down here as well but I think the side mount is a little more visible to make the local law enforcement happier. That's why I opted in for the side mount, but both options are available. So now that our rear hugger is off, we just need to dissect the harness that's inside. Let's see how we could run the wires. So this goes like this over here. Okay, and we're just gonna leave this here. Let me try to get to the harness to figure out the harness side of things. And I believe when we take off the right cover, there is a plug right here. This is the only plug that looks anything that resembles what we've taken apart so far. I'm gonna unplug this. If you got the optional license plate mount, this is the the Y connector that we receive. So what you wanna do is you wanna connect this into here and then connect the other part into right here. 
And from what I think, this is gonna, we're gonna run this nicely down through here and through here, I'll zip tie them after. And what I wanna do is I wanna connect these two. The connectors are the turn signals. Okay, now that they're here, I'm gonna put this back in place. I'm gonna grab my key. Let's try to test to make sure that the sides are correct because they're not really indicated right or left. So let me signal right and let me signal left. And luckily we got it right. Do you wanna make sure you do this before you put anything away guys because last thing you wanna do is put everything together and zip tie it nicely. Then run into the issue of it being the wrong sides that are going off. So again, right and left, that's perfect. So now we could turn the bike off and let's try to see what we're doing with our routing of the cables. Okay, so now that we tested our lights, I unplugged them because I know which side is what because they're color coded and I'm putting our bolts back on in the same sequence that we took them off. And just a little tip guys, when you're doing stuff like this, try to make sure that you think of all the wires and what's gonna show because we're doing all this to clean up the bike. The wires down here show quite a bit right now, but what I did was that I first fed them through this plastic over here, which you'll see, and I'm gonna quickly, before I tighten everything, I wanna zip tie them together down there so they're running towards the middle of this fender eliminator that when you look from behind, you don't see any excessive wires. Our Y connector was connected here, guys. That came with our license plate mount because if you're only installing your turn signals with the, with the fender eliminator that has the license plate mount here, you don't get this Y connector. You just use what you took off from your stock fender. But this Y connector allows us to, number one, run the signals here, but also still have a connection over here for our license plate light. And before I go any further, I'm gonna use the supplied zip ties. And I'm gonna zip tie these together nicely so that we could tuck it away. Before you connect any of your harnesses, guys, there is a lip on this end here. Make sure you push on this plastic piece from above and just slide it in like this over here. Yes, and make sure it's centered before you continue on with the installation of this piece. Now that everything is properly placed and plugged in, I'm just doing clean up with zip ties. So the final part is our side mount license plate bracket and this piece actually has the license plate light on it as well. The only thing is, remember we pulled this harness off the stock fender. This still has turn signals on it and RC doesn't say anything in their instructions or they don't give us any kind of other harness that comes with it to utilize, but we don't need the turn signals anymore. I'm gonna see if I could clean up this harness a little bit by removing the turn signal cables and just keeping this for the license plate light. There's enough room to tuck stuff away on the swing arm, but I just don't want these white things dangling around. So I'm just gonna try to take this apart and see if I could do a cleaner installation. This is not in the instructions of NRC guys. They didn't give us a harness. I wish they did, but I did go ahead and do this. I'm not gonna talk about what I did. If you're electrically savvy, try to get rid of these wires because I don't wanna be responsible for it. But now this will plug into only our license plate light, which is on this end. And this will plug into the harness over here. And I wanna test this, let's put this here. If I didn't mess up, my license plate light will shine when I turn the bike on. And it does, so we're good to go. Now I'm gonna grab this little spacer bracket thing that they sent for the license plate mount and we're reusing our stock bolts that we took off the fender. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in place and be, be mindful of your wiring harness piece. And as always, start a few threads by hand. Go, our license plate mount is on and I think this will turn like this if you want to have it sideways 
and it clicks in and you could also bring it all the way up and click it in like this. But before we call it finished, I'm gonna to try to clean up this wiring harness here and then we'll be done. So guys, I think that's it. The bike is looking great. We did our first mods, our essential first mods, which is the radiator and oil cooler guards, caliper spacers, our TWM fuel cap and our fender eliminator kit. And this rear end of this bike looks so good right now. And I wanna point something out guys. When you do stuff like this, you really wanna make sure that if you're running turn signals, you're running them for a reason and safety. You wanna make sure that your left and right turn signals are far apart enough that other motorists can tell if you're turning left or if you're turning right. And that's something that's really important. If that wasn't any consideration for you, why are you running turn signals in the first place? So I just want to point that out. And our license plate bracket is now moved over here, which shows off our 240 rear tire. Everything's looking great. I think now what I gotta do is put my license plate on there and take it for a spin, guys. But if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.